I, I'm really not sure why I took this job. Uh, this is a 1992 Ford Taurus and somebody's been playing around with this. This is actually my friend Pete, his younger brother's neighbor's car. <laughs> so it's one of those. And apparently it has been to multiple different places and they can't fix it. It's a no start. There is evidence that someone's been tampering with just about everything. So let me get you a couple of shots of what I noticed so far. So what I typically do before I turn the camera on is I make sure that I have a fully charged battery when it comes to a no start diagnosis. And, and that way I you know, push the car down to the garage, put a charger on it or grab a jump pack, whatever, just to get prepared. And one of the things I noticed when I turned the key on, as you can see, is my check engine light is not lighting. So that's a good indication that the computer is not alive and talking. And then of course, we have other evidence, which is we have an engine computer sitting on the passenger floor. So what I was going to do is crank it over and watch the check engine light. Another tip on Ford systems would be if you turn the key on and the check engine light lights and you crank it over and the light goes out while you're cranking, that means the computer is receiving an RPM signal. That is unique to Ford but it is a good tip. In this case, I can't do any of that. Something else I noticed, the fuse box is down, fuses are on the floor. Again, someone's been playing. And so I open the hood and of course, the hood doesn't stay open. Gotta get my vice grips to put on the hood shocks to keep it open, no big deal, old car, you'll have that. But what I notice under the hood is more evidence of tampering, injectors unplugged, and then of course, the engine computer itself, you see this harness right here, is unplugged. <laughs> so the computer that's on the floor inside the car, yeah, that's the computer for this car. So of course the check engine light's not going to light when you turn the key on, when the computer's not even plugged in. I I'm seriously concerned about this vehicle and I'm concerned because when people get in to a car like this and start playing around, it makes my job so much more difficult. So first thing I'm going to do is put the computer back in and start from scratch, see what we're missing. All right. What else is unplugged? I'll plug this fuel injector back in. Looks like the ignition coil is new. Not sure about the plug wires. Or what's inside. Looks like maybe the module has been replaced. Although not recently. It is a, a different color. Different color meaning it looks like it's been changed at one point. Um, well, let's go back inside, see if we can do that check engine light test. Turning the key on. Still no check engine light. Okay, so we have evidence of a computer that is not, what I say, alive. Meaning, missing a power, missing a ground, maybe a shorted reference. Going back under the hood now and we're going to do some quick five volt reference circuit checks. Memory's coming back to me on this 92 Ford and uh, I remember the computer grounds, they had issues with this uh, computer ground connection in this location. I'll, I might have to unbolt this for you guys to see it. I don't wanna move things yet, just in case I accidentally fix it, but just keep that in mind. Computer grounds in this location were known for issues. So the checks I'm, I'm doing that I mentioned inside the car is on the five volt reference circuit. The five volt reference is a, just think of it as the computer's blood 
or cardiovascular system that that 5 volt reference is really the lifeline of this entire system. When it comes to testing the 5 volt reference circuit, what you want to do is find a sensor that's easy to get to. The TPS, which is right here in this location, is my best sensor on this car to check this reference circuit. We could also go after a pressure sensor for the EGR system and it's right here. A little bit more difficult to get to though because it's underneath the connector. And we can also check the intake air temp sensor which is right here. But when you check thermistors, which is what this is called, you need to unplug the sensor to check for the five volt reference. In our case, the TPS is going to be the easiest place to do these checks. So I'll walk you through that right now. Starting at the top wire on this sensor, just using a back probing tool. I actually got these as part of my kit, my Pico kit, but they work well with just about everything. All right, so right away, we have really good direction as far as where we're going with this car. You can see that we're showing 11.4 volts on the top wire of this TPS. And guys, let me tell you, this is a sensor that should never have battery voltage on. Some of the older systems, older being maybe in the 80s and some of the Euro and Asian cars, not our domestics here in the US, would use a throttle position switch that actually did have battery voltage on either one or two of the throttle position sensor wires. Now that particular sensor was called a throttle position switch. It was exactly that, a switch contact, not a potentiometer like this one is. So sorry for rambling there. This potentiometer should never have battery voltage, okay? So right away, we have a reference circuit problem. Guys, please pay attention to the description of this video. I will put links to other videos I've done that deal with the five volt reference circuit and it will give you a real good idea of what I'm talking about. I'll also include a playlist to my five volt reference chapter in my book. So what I've done is I've taken the segments in my book and whenever I have videos like this one, that relate to a chapter, I'll make a playlist for that. So you guys that have my book, you can follow along in the chapter and you can also follow that playlist. Again, that'll be in the description of this video. So let's do the rest of the wires now on the TPS, see what we have. So this one's 11.4, 11.41, the next one down, same thing. And one more, I think this is gonna tell me a lot. I expect to see high voltage here too. This is my sensor ground and I do not. So if you remember when I started, I talked about those computer grounds by the battery. And as I was going here, that's what I was thinking of, but if this sensor ground, which is that, nope, there it was right there, no. Am I on the sensor ground, this 11.2, or am I not getting my T-pin in straight and I'm hitting the signal wire? I have to be sure of what I'm doing here because this is a critical, critical test as far as direction and where we're going. Let's make sure we're getting on that ground pin. I am poking a small hole in this wire because I am not sure yep all right that's the ground wire itself reading 11.2 volts so a little bit different voltage reading than the signal 
and the reference. Try to get this in there. This T pin is a little bit, or this back probing pin is a little bit short for this connector. There it is right there. Okay, so what this means is we have a bad computer ground. Uh, it could be a sensor ground circuit too, but the way that these sensor grounds work, guys, is all of the sensors, lots of sun in this picture. Hopefully this shot's still okay. I just wanted to get you a little bit more zoomed out view of all the sensors under the hood. So the mass airflow, the PFE sensor for the EGR, the intake air, the TPS, uh, the engine coolant temp sensor, which is down low, you can't see. All of these sensors, uh, I mentioned the mass airflow, all of these sensors share a ground circuit that go back to the computer, and then the computer takes those grounds and grounds them externally. Um, so I'm gonna keep you guys focused on this 11.2 volt TPS ground while I'm wiggling the connections under here, the computer ground connections. Let's see what we get. Just watch the, uh, I'm worried about the computer grounds. There it was right there, did you see that? Man, that's cool. Hold on one second, let me move this out of the way. Lots of shadows here, that sun is not helping this camera right now. I hope these shots turn out okay. I'm pretty sure the last shot you guys saw the uh, the ground voltage change. That's pretty cool. And what's really cool is just experiences is key. I'm thinking about a car, you know, it's probably been 10, 15 years since I've worked on one like this with the computer ground issue, but these are things you never forget. You know, you get a car that, that beats you up. We talk about this a lot in class, that uh, you get a car that beats you up and you might let it get to you even, but if you are diligent and you find the problem, and you don't give up, you will make money on that car for 20 more years. Not that particular car, but that design, that system, you never forget. The connection I'm messing with, guys, watch the multimeter, is this one right here. And back in the day, we used to take this connector and we would cut it and hardwire this. Now why they put a, a plug-in style connector that went to the battery, I don't know. But watch my ground voltage on my TPS when I wiggle this connector. Watch. Oh, you know what? There it is right there. Actually, when I'm doing that, I can hear the fuel pump running too. <laughs> and uh, I didn't notice this till now. But look, wire's broken. And this one, the one that's still connected. Watch the, watch the voltage. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna fix this real easy. I'll show you how to do it. And these shadows are horrible. Try to keep my my body out of this shot. All right, um, just gonna take this connector. We're just gonna get rid of it completely. Look at that broke on the other side. Just pulling on that. 
There are three grounds. Let's cut the ends of these off. They're corroded. These wires are bad. Look at the powder, like the residue coming out of there. I don't know if the camera picked that up. Um, I'm not pulling this harness apart. It really needs to have the wires cut down further. Uh, I'll probably have uh, Danny do that. Um, like I said, this is one of those friend ones. And so I'm just going to get this thing working for now. Okay, I'm hoping. I apologize for the sun here. I, I, I'm hoping if I keep my shadow in this shot that you guys will be able to see what I'm doing better. Oh no, we'll see. I'm hoping, hoping. But look at this wire. Look how corroded that is. You know what happens is that it'll end up down into the harness. That can go that can go two feet down into that harness. See the spark? That was just current flow from the key still being on and the computer waking up. Um, that wouldn't be a danger if that touches ground. That's what we're going to do with this circuit. So, you see that again? Watch. That's just the fuel pump turning on. Okay. Yeah, these connectors are bad. All right, so what I want is I want this car to run. I was going to use my my heat shrink style butt connectors, but I'm not wasting them on this because this is really needs to be redone. So I'm just using a barrel connector. We'll put two of these together. Again, what needs to be done to fix this properly, and my guess is they probably won't, that harness right here, this needs to be stripped down further. We might have to go maybe a foot into that harness and cut out the bad wire. When you see copper wire that's, that's um, corroded like that, it has some black in it, and it has a different color copper, it's oxidized very bad. Now this will work for a while, but that would be the right fix, is to get rid of the bad wire. I'm not doing that in this scenario, basically on a freebie. I'm gonna fix this and tell him what to do, and he can handle it. I just wanna hear this car run. That is my focus right now, and I want you guys to watch my multimeter as I get this together. When you have wire like this, it doesn't um, it doesn't solder either. Solder won't stick to it, so uh, that's the other reason we want to use a butt connector. All right, you guys can see that my voltage dropped down to five. Now that could be, I could have been wrong. That bottom wire might not be my sensor ground. That actually might be the reference circuit. Well, we'll see. Uh, I'm just thinking one of two things. Either when I connect this second ground, that drops to zero near zero and if it doesn't then the wire that I'm actually on right now is my reference and my top wire or middle wire was my ground. I don't know, let's see, let's just touch it. Okay, then I was wrong. That bottom wire is my 5 volt reference and my top wire then or middle wire, probably top wire would have been the sensor ground, the one that was reading 11.4. But you can see this is a good example though I was again wrong about the connection on the TPS on which wire was which. You can see how valuable the 5 volt reference test is. In our case, having 11 volts 
on the 5 volt reference circuit that screams bad ground in fact every time i've seen it it's been a bad ground um, all right, let me show you the top wire so while i have this opportunity let me move back up top That should be my sensor ground wire at the top. It's gray and red. If I take this off, I'm not making contact. Let's get back on that. This pin's a little bit short for this connector. All right, 1131. The key's been on for a little bit. So watch that top wire. That should be my here you guys are not seeing me move that I just moved the connection to the top wire on the TPS we're reading 11.3 on the meter if I connect this ground watch it this should be a sensor ground sensor ground wires what you want to see is less than 0.1 of a volt with the key on and there it is right there so bad sensor bad not just sensor ground in this case I'm measuring sensor ground bad computer ground which was raising voltage on everything including my 5 volt reference circuit let me move that back down to the 5 volt reference wire I'll take the ground back off okay this is a, also a good lesson on ground to ground voltage drop testing and uh, you know it's kind of strange that my meter is connected to battery ground over here and my other lead my yellow lead is going to the sensor ground and I'm reading voltage and the cool thing about that is the more you see bad grounds when you do ground to ground voltage drop tests the more it makes sense you don't need an ohm meter voltmeter is the way to go pretty cool all right moving this back down to my 5 volt ref wire I know you guys aren't seeing this, but I'm doing the same thing I did before, just back probing the TPS connector. Eleven thirty-nine. Connect up this computer ground, which again the computer ground grounds the entire computer board. All of the sensor grounds go back to the computer board, so we're grounding the sensors too when we do this. And there is my normal 5 volt reference circuit voltage. Let's crimp that. So imagine this car and the guys that were working on this. They were all over the place. They were putting in ignition coils, unplugging injectors, unplugging the computer. I just wonder how many hours that they had into this. And this wasn't Pete's brother. This was wherever uh, Pete's brother took, or Pete's brother's neighbor took the car. I guess they had it at some garage. And to be fair to Danny, uh, which is Pete's brother's name, he doesn't do this stuff. And... Um, so I'm not knocking him. In fact, I'm not knocking the neighbor either. I'm just making a point that how many hours that you would have in a repair like this or in a troubleshooting procedure like this when guys, we had this we had this narrowed down very, very quickly just knowing principles. Okay? And again, for you guys that are new at this, the playlist that I'll put in the description of this video, the 5 volt reference circuit. I have so many case studies that you guys can watch that will benefit from this and it will give you really, really good insight into what I'm doing and how to use this in the future. All right, so again, this would have been better done using heat shrink style 
butt connectors, but after cutting out the bad and corroded wires. This is good enough for now. I'll let Danny know about it. I'm hoping this car starts and runs. I honestly don't expect it to run very well because somebody was in here playing around. But I don't know. Let's just see what happens. We'll go from there. If it still has a running problem, once it's running, we'll address that as well. But this car should start and run at this point. Some nice shadows. Sorry, guys. I'm going to try to start it. Oh, my check engine light is on too. Real quick. Notice, check engine light is now lit. All right, cranking it. Pretty cool. Car is running, which is what I cared about. Awesome. The sun is killing me on these shots. Well, not so bad, guys. The uh, takeaway from this is to know your fundamentals. And if you understand the 5 volt reference circuit, you can quickly identify problems like this. I've done this many, many times. The last one was actually on a Honda that had the exact same scenario. The only difference was I was reading nine volts on the five volt reference circuit instead of 11 like we had on this car. And it ended up having a bad block ground. So again, description of this video, I'll put some other relevant videos for you guys to watch to get you up to speed. And I guess the other thing is, don't be afraid when you see a car that's been messed around with. Sometimes it goes pretty smoothly. In this case, it did. Uh, but sometimes they can be a nightmare too. But again, knowing an approach, having an approach, having good direction, that's what this is about. Know your systems, keep following me guys. I'll teach you that. A lot of you already know that. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time.